I want to share with you some things that the Lord has taught me through these years. I've mentioned to many people that what I want to talk about is how God uses adversity in our lives to really, truly bless us. Thirteen years ago, I was really on a, a mountain high, um, rejoicing and celebrating, rejoicing and celebrating my, the forgiveness that I was experiencing from God. And it was a wonderful time in my life. I went on a trip, and Red Bank supported me on that trip. Um, and when I got back from the trip, over the course of, I would say, that next couple of years, life was really tough. There were a lot of trials and adversity that I went through um, that I did not expect. Some of them actually within the body of Christ. People, relationships that I had that uh, there, were, there was wounding there. I did not expect that at all. But those were adversities that the Lord has used in my life to really set me free. So I want to talk to you about that tonight. And I want to start out with a scripture. And this is actually the message version of the Bible. I love the way this reads. In James 1, verse 3 to 4, Consider it, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You'll get his help and won't be condescended to when you ask for it. Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. For such persons, loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more life. I was praying to prepare really for tonight. I asked the Lord, what do you want me to talk about in relation to adversity? Because this seems to be the theme for me right now in my life and sharing with people. And the first thing the Lord laid on my heart was to tell you to look beyond your circumstances. And that's very hard to do because we tend to focus on the temporal in life. What's temporary? Whereas the Bible actually tells us to focus on what is eternal. You know, the mind of the flesh is set on the flesh and it leads to death. This is scripture. But the mind that is set on the spirit and the things of the spirit lead to life. One of the things that I have learned about myself and have had to practice is transformation comes through the renewing of your mind. My mind would wander and my mind, I would get uh, caught on the circumstances of my life and I really had to begin to study and focus in on what the Word of God, what the Word of God says about my circumstances, what the Word of God says about me. Because a lot of times our circumstances will let our circumstances define who we are and how we feel. So I had to learn to transform my mind by renewing my mind with the Word of God. And that takes practice. That is not easy. Because we tend to want to just go through life. We want things to be easy. But life is not easy. Life is hard. And I was very fortunate as a new Christian coming back to the Lord. And I had some friends who told me, you know, Jessica, enjoy this honeymoon period, is what they called it. And really, when I was here 13 years ago, I was still in that honeymoon period with the Lord, just enjoying, you know, the new life that I had. But they warned me, they said, listen, you know, you're really going to know the Lord and come to know the Lord through the trials of life and through persevering through the trials of life. 
I had no idea what they were talking about. But now, in going through many of the trials that I've been through, I am closer to the Lord. I feel that I have come to know His heart about things that I didn't know before because I was really more focused on myself. But it's through the trials that I began to see His heart for others, His heart for the world. So one of the benefits there of, of trials and adversities. So what are the things, you know, circumstances actually are used to purify our faith. That's part of what the scripture was referring to. And I found, you know, God is so good because when, he, when he's teaching you something, he always gives you tools. He gives you resources that you may need in order to learn. And the Lord put this book in my hand, and it's called The Upside of Adversity. And if you've never read this book, I would suggest, uh, recommend it to you, suggest it to you. It's by Oz Hillman. And there are a few things, there's something that he talks about. He gives six reasons for adversity in this book. And really, this book is focused on, you know, all of us are called to be leaders where we are. And many of us like to be followers, but we're really called to be leaders. And he's speaking to people about becoming leaders and how you do that. But the six reasons for adversity, why do we experience trials? First of, it, first of all, it's because we're set apart. God set us apart as his people, as his servants. So we're going to go through trials because that's how you become closer to the Lord. You know your need for the Lord in those trials. But it's because we're set apart. If you remember Joseph in the Bible, Joseph went through a lot of trials. It started with his family betraying him and selling him into slavery. And then he was thrown into the pit. He went through various trials uh, in Egypt, but he rose to a place of leadership in Egypt. And God actually used him in the very end to set his own family free. That's an incredible story. But he was set apart to do that. Even before it happened, it was written. And so because of what he was set apart to do, he was going to go through trials, go through adversity, but they took him to where he became uh, a leader and set his family free. One of the other reasons why we go through adversity is really to identify with others. And I have to say that's one of the things that's happened for me also uh, in these years is in working through things in my life, wounds and, and places and things that needed healing, I was able to relate to other people and speak healing into their lives, where if I had not gone through that, I wouldn't be able to do that. So we're able to identify with others. That's one of the things that comes out of adversity. And then, in general, our testing is to prove our faith is genuine. I mean, how, you know, when you think about a relationship and your loyalty to someone, how do you know someone's loyal to you? You go through something really difficult. And they stick by you. That's genuine. That's loyalty in relationship. And that's what the Father is looking for. Our calling and preparation is another. I am called to minister healing. If I had no need to be healed, I couldn't do that. If I hadn't been through hard times, if I hadn't been through trials and adversities, I couldn't minister to other people about those things. So our calling is another reason. Our ability to trust God's faithfulness. I'm sure I'm talking to the choir. There's a lot of you out there who have had your faith tried and you're trusting God, try to depend, depending on whatever it is. It may seem simple to one person, but yet complicated to another. But your trial is your trial. And through that, if, you're, if you come out in the end and you're able to trust God, how wonderful the treasures are from that. 
how deep, all the secrets that you learn from God through that. And the other reason why we go through adversity is our sin. Our sin. One of the things that I have had to do is really surrender through many trials of temptation and realize what my sin was and acknowledge my sin. And some of the adversity I went through actually revealed my sin that I didn't even know was there. But that's another reason for the adversity. One of the tools that God uses in adversity is pressure. Can anybody relate to that? Pressure. I want to tell you a quick story. About three and a half years ago, I, I've worked for Blue Cross since I uh, graduated uh, college. And I worked on one side of the company for 12 years. And I told the Lord, I was bored, which got me in a lot of trouble. Um, I said, I'm bored, Lord, I want to I challenge, I want to do something more. And he answered my prayer. Even my vice president said she did not think it was a good idea that I take this job that I did take. Um, but it was a manager's position, I've been in it for th three and a half years. And I knew within the first week I had made a terrible mistake. I should not have taken this job. But you know what? God knew. He knew that I was going to take that job. He knew that I would be obedient to Him. Even though, even all the leaders around me said, I don't know why you want to do this. You shouldn't do this. You know, we'll create a job here for you. But there was something on the inside kept driving me. No, I need more. I want more. I want more. But I didn't calculate that there would be sacrifice and cost in it. I just wanted not to be bored anymore. Um, I learned my lesson in that, that when you ask God for something, you really think over it before you do that. So, But it's in the pressure, it not only the work, the work was pressure. The people that I have worked with uh, are different personalities than mine. One in particular, who is my boss. And um, We've actually grown to be um, close, closer than we were three and a half years ago. The Lord has actually had me speak into her life. Um, but the pressure at some times was so intense uh, that I would just, I would literally leave work and just weep. And, and just tell the Lord, I don't think I can take this. And He just said, be faithful and continue. So, what was I challenged to do? Trust God. Because if he wanted me out of there, he could have taken me out. He could have given me another job. And I have looked for another job. But it didn't happen for me. One of the things that was revealed in the pressure, and this is what happens in adversity, pressure comes, circumstances come, it actually reveals things that are hidden and one of the things that was revealed for me was that I was afraid. I was struggling with fear. Very, very, very deep fears. And they really began to manifest for me physically. I, began, I was sick at times. Um, just the anxiety that I felt, uh, it, it was just extreme for me. But God wanted me to see that because we can't be we cannot be free of what we don't know about of what we don't see. So part of my trial is the pressure revealing that I was afraid. The first thing I had to do was admit I am afraid. And I have. A few months ago in the presence of my peers, many uh, other ministers you know, I didn't want to tell them that I was afraid, but, but I did. I said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of everything. Sounds funny, but it's not. I'm, 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 I have been afraid 
all my life. Now you might say, well, how do you stand up here and sing and, and do all that? That's God. I can't take credit for that. That's the Spirit of the Lord. When He wants something done, He has it done. And, and I was raised doing music. And But basic fears, fears of loss, fears of abandonment, fears of rejection, those are the fears that I had to come to face. One of the questions that you ask when you're in a trial is, when will your trial be over? Oz Hillman says, I believe your trial will end when it doesn't matter anymore. It will end when you have put your trust so completely in God that pressures, problems, and material things no longer have a hold on you. I'm getting there. I'm not quite there. But I'm getting there. And I think in sharing that, I just want to encourage you. When you go through a circumstance, pay attention to what you feel. Pay attention to what you're thinking. Pay attention to what you're saying to other people. Because it will reveal the hidden in your life. And God always wants you to be whole. He wants you to be set free in all areas of your life. Because I have, so, have had so much fear, one of the, the issues I've had uh, is control. You know, I want to control the things in my life and not let go. And just a really quick, funny story. I live in Casey, West Columbia. We live on the river. And I went and bought me a tube recently. So I would go tubing. And I was so excited. <laughs> And I had this all played out in my mind how this was going to, you know, look and feel like and all of that. And I went down by myself. And so I got to the edge of the river. And my desire was to let the river take me wherever it wanted to go. That was my desire, my heart's desire. I got to the edge of the river. And immediately I began to calculate where do I want to stand? Where do I need to enter in? Wait a minute, that water over there is too rough. Wait a minute, that water is too, too smooth. Oh, those people are going to bother me. Let me see, I need to get over here. And I started calculating, what, you know, started controlling the situation. So finally I got in. It took me about 20 minutes just to struggle with where I get in, how I get in. Um, and it was one of those moments, you know, when it's just you and God. There was no one else really paying attention to me, but I was paying attention to me. Um, but I got in the water, and I got into the tube. I was laying there just enjoying I was like, yeah, this is how it should be. Just relaxed and let go, you know. And all of a sudden, I hit a rock. Well, that disturbed me. <laughs> because then I realized I didn't know what was around me. Because I had just put my head back, and I was just enjoying and relaxing. The rock disturbed me. And so I sat up and I said, wait a minute, I can't do this now. I got to sit up and I got to see where I'm going. And, and so then I started paddling. I'm sure I looked ridiculous to everybody that was on the side of the river. Just paddling, paddling. So I'm, Let me get out here in the smooth water. And so that was just, the, over 45 minutes, that was how it was. I'd lay back and I'd relax and then I'd hit a rock. Or I'd get in the stagnant water and I didn't want to be there. So it was just miserable. I was just miserable. So finally I got down. I got down to where I knew I had to get out if I wanted to be able to walk up to the entrance and maybe tube again. I don't know. Um, but I was getting out and there were some little kids there and this one little boy came almost straight up to me and he said, well how did you get over here? I said, I worked really hard to get up right here. <laughs> I worked really hard, but that was God. He was like, how did you get over here? Um, so needless to say, I did not tube anymore. I went home and asked God to please set me free from control <laughs> so that I can enjoy life. Um, I don't know if that helps anybody, but that's, um, that's uh, my story there. 
I want to share another song with you. It's called My Healer. God is healing me. He wants to heal you. He takes it like an onion and he just takes a layer off at a time. That's how he's done it for me. A layer at a time. He'll say, oh, let's deal with this now. I'm sure that family and friends think I'm crazy because I'm always talking about being healed and something's wrong with me and I got to do this. And, but that's God's way. He knows how much we can handle. And he's my healer. He is my portion. He is all that I need. <laughs> 